Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today, we have kind of a free-for-all episode, as you want to call it. There's a lot of news going on, I figured. So Jeff thought we just might as well talk about Everything that's going on right now in the NFL, because we got some big things. Yeah, it's been a, a huge shift this week. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of fun to watch, Deal. mostly because it usually benefits the things I've already done. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's true. huge. That's true. Not so much for you. It's we can a, just. It's been a very. It was a very bad Friday for one of my fantasy teams that we had actually talked about the week before the auction yeah. draft we did, which I had Zeke. We knew he was going to be suspended. We just we both I think we're under the assumption maybe two games. Well, I was thinking tops four, right? At the, and at that, you're still but six. To be fair, we probably, when you look into it, you probably should have known because six is yeah, kind of the baseline it, it for that. I just didn't think... There I were, didn't think that's what he was going to go for. What though. I thought was going to really happen was I didn't think they were going to suspend him for domestic violence. I thought they were going to be like a personal conduct yeah. type thing, generalization of all the things. But they must have had enough evidence. But we'll get into Zeke a little bit. And Sammy Watkins is another guy I had on my team. And... We'll talk about what we think that does to him because he's still he's fine he's still gonna be playing and it'll be a number one option. Well, but yeah. it's a different situation. So we'll talk about all those injuries. There's been injury Jordan Matthews who just went to the Bills. Talk about that. <laughs> Dude, there's so much good stuff. To, so yeah, much good stuff to. I mean, there's to a talk bunch, about. bunch of injury news. Before we get into that, make sure you check us out on Twitter. We're the FF Profit on there. Instagram, it's Fantasy Football Profit. Which talking about Instagram, one of our posts the other day. We did a little Jordy Nelson versus Des Bryant because oh I have Jordy ranked ahead of Des jo- Jeff has Des ranked ahead of Jordy, and <laughs> I don't know what the final total was, but at one point it was twenty eight to three Jordy to Des, and people were like actually upset that this was even a question. <laughs> I, once again, I've upset <laughs> the viewing base. Yeah, I, I I have no problem with people liking Des or liking yeah. Jordy more than Des. but I, I feel like it's skewed one way where they they hate Des yeah. more than is. Logical at this point. It's kind of. Interesting. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm completely off base. I mean, but you only have him two spots ahead no, of. No, it actually kind of turned. It was weird. Below. I had it turned me. I'm like, I don't think it's that far off. I, I, I think it's closer than. And actually, I had Des when we did our initial ranks a couple months ago. I actually had Des ahead of Jordy. This was just a switch yeah. recently. So I, don't know. I mean, that's yeah, another, we, we, and that's another <laughs> thing I do want to talk about. That'd be great. And with yep. Zeke, how does yep. that actually affect yep. Des? Yep. Also, visit, visit. Us at fantasyfootballprofit.com. We've actually been getting quite a bit of questions in from the website. In the little, we have a little link on there. Where you can just write the question right in there. Emails right directly to us. We'll have that in tomorrow's episode, a mailbag episode. Before we get into all of this, I wanted to actually tell you guys about the Fan Up Network app. This is a new app we've actually just started using. And basically, what this does is, if you have, what, I have teams on ESPN. I have a team on Yahoo, one team, and then I have a team on my fantasy league. Trying to see where all those teams are and everything that's going on is a mess sometimes. So basically the FanUp Network app, which I'm very happy we know about now, you can get the app, put all your teams from it's ESPN, Yahoo, My Fantasy League, and NFL on one spot where you can basically check your scores the whole time, see everything going on with your team, injuries, I think all that good stuff with all your teams in one spot. just makes life easy. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, how... You don't even like to play in other leagues or other systems because I, yeah, of that before. Exactly. You know, trying yeah. to find it. So this is I just get annoyed great. by it. So it is really, and it's it's pretty slick. It's very quick actually, and it I, I like the way it's actually built. Usually those things are cumbersome, and this one is. No, it, so I mean, it moves I, I do quick. Enjoy it. You're not sitting there waiting for stuff to load. I mean, I had, this was much quicker than ESPN app for me. The ESPN app, I have problems with Watch that. out. <laughs> I'm sorry, ESPN. I don't know if you want to sponsor us too, but no. It's, this app moves nice and quick, and it's just great because you can have all the teams, all the – Basically, all your injury news, all your player news from all your leagues, everything. It'd be be able to see all your guys, all the injuries, all that good stuff. It's FanUp Network. You can go fanupnetwork.com. You can get basically the app everywhere, Apple, you know, Android, all that stuff. Check it out. It's available on Amazon as well. Everywhere you want to go, find the app, fanupnetwork.com. We'll have it on our show notes for everybody. You can check that out. So might as well just get into it, Jeff. Let's do it. Let's talk about Zeke. That's, I mean, that's the big story. We feel like we're a little behind. It's old news at this point. <laughs> but yeah, it's it happened after our Friday episode. Happened, most people, I've seen a lot of other podcasts, had emergency episodes. We didn't have that luxury. And at that time, it's like, okay, we'll just... Well, I had nothing good to say on Friday. People ask me, 
Like, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm like, you know, I got to think about this because it is interesting. And still, how many days later, I still don't quite know. We have an auction draft coming up, our big auction draft we've talked about before in this league. Actually, about this, this weekend in Pittsburgh. This weekend. And Zeke is out there, and we have some decisions to make. So we can base this off of – there's two – There's. I feel like the snake draft strategy is a lot easier than an auction draft strategy right now with Zeke. Snake, I feel like he's – what do you think? Second rounder? I think you'd still feel comfortable. In the, somebody's going to take him in the second every draft you're in, yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, I feel like you have to take him in the second round. Yeah. Me, and this was a guy, like I said, pretty much if he was suspended for three games or less, I would still have him ranked number three. But the problem is he's suspended for six games, right? And, and there's a bye week in there, too. So it's, Yep, and there's a bye week in there. So he actually doesn't get to play until week eight. So, I mean, legitimately, he's gone for half the season now. And the worry also is, you know, what if Darren McFadden actually does really well and he comes back and he's still splitting carries, right? I assume that when he comes back after eight weeks, he's not going to take lead back role well, right away. It's possible. Let's say, let's say McFadden has, does great and the team's doing great. It's not like he's ever going to – I mean, he's not taking the job from Zeke. The thing is, they might not feel the need to rush Zeke 20-some times a game. as exactly. they Just wear him down. If they can win without him, he doesn't need – he can go 15-20 to 20 and not 20-25, to 20, something like that. Yeah. But they just don't need to wear him down. He's saving for the playoff run. That could be what happens. I still think he's going to get the bulk of the carries, but, I mean, that's something to think about. If you have – if you can save a running back, why not? I mean, so it's just – it's giving a chance for that to happen. And – or it's just getting a chance for the Cowboys are just going to be, they might not do as well. Who knows? And their whole offense, everything changes. Maybe Dak's confidence goes down. Maybe they go, you know, what, two and four when he's gone. That could just ruin a young quarterback's confidence, too, and just could change the team. There's so many things. Yeah, just, there's a lot. So, for me, I would feel, I probably feel safe taking him late in the second round. Um, but, and especially in taking him that early. Um, you have a chance to build around that, right? So it's not like you're taking him number one and then you're just hoping kind of pieces fall to you. Yeah. You have a legitimate, if you grab a running back first, you can take him, you know, the second one, make sure you hit wide receivers, and then you can grab some, you know, back-end running backs or McFadden, yep. you know, which you can get, I'm sure, still pretty late, um, <clears throat> and build your team that way. So he's still an incredible talent, and I like him a lot. The interesting part, I mean, besides for all that, comes also into keeper leagues. Yep. And then, so, I mean, when you have a keeper, whether it's Snake, so if you actually get to take him in the second round. And you get round, him the second you, year, yeah. yeah. That's a nice one. Auction's the big thing here. So, yeah, that's a great question. I keeper. love auction. If you're an auction keeper. Yeah, and so we usually do a $200 uh, uh, salary that yeah. we'd go for. How much would you pay for Zeke in an auction draft right now, knowing mm-hmm. what you do? I mean, off the top of my head, I feel like it has to be somewhere in the 40s. I, could, I think it's 40. It seems crazy for a guy who's only going to play half a year that you're still going to pay $40. But I'm still thinking of this as, let's say, I was willing to pay upwards of 70 something. I paid 74 in a league. Even if you cut that in half, yeah. you're at, what, 37. That's a, that's a half of the season. That's not counting the playoff run. So you're still getting a little bit. You know, if you actually yeah. do it value like that, it's, you should be worth at least 40 based off of that. I mean, I don't even yeah. know if that makes sense. It's just I'm trying to rationalize it in my head. Right. I'm, I'm more of like, a I'm more of a mid 30s guy right yeah, now. Yeah. See, but you you would probably think that he's there's still going to be in most leagues there'll probably be more than one team that thinks he, they're going to get a steal and you could get a steal because that's the thing if you could told you get Zeke if you can get Zeke on your team for forty dollars when you could have got him for sixty to seventy before. I mean, you can get a whole other good player in there, and so if your team is able to sustain it for the first seven weeks, even if you're three and four. Four and three for sure. You all of a sudden add Zeke week eight. You're in I mean, you're in great shape, I think. Yeah. You have a, you have that star. Your team's just your team is much better probably than a team you would have been able to draft with Zeke originally. If it works out. You just gotta hopefully have a good enough team around it to sustain. That's very true. And, and you know what? I guess I feel confident enough in how I've done a fantasy football in the past that at the worst I feel like I can be three and four. And I feel like if you're three and four, it's not great, but you have that chance. Maybe that's and it all leagues are different, too. If you're in a keeper league, other teams could have keepers. So I'm thinking it in our context, in our league. There's a team with Bell and Johnson and Julio, which is <laughs> insane. So i got to think of it in that context. How am I going to win that league? I almost need a game-changer type player. I need to try to figure out a, a way to make my team better than it possibly could be. That could be my way 
is adding a Zeke later on and be able to maneuver around it kind of a thing. I don't, you know. I just think he's that good of a player. It's If you're confident enough in your abilities to maneuver a team, make a team, you know. Yeah. And it's tough. It is it's tough. A, it's a tough sell. It really is because half the season so much can happen. I mean, I guess the, the other thing going into it, um, assuming the majority of leagues you can trade still, you know, you always have that bargaining chip if you really get into dire it, need. Yeah. So you could trade Zeke to a team that wants to make that playoff push for some quality pickups. So, I mean, I, I don't think it really kills you either way. Yep. But um, that first half of the season is going to be really interesting. But, I mean, I guess it depends on how, how, you know, can you grab a running back late that is going to make up the difference? And right now it seems like you can because Amir Abdullah is still going pretty yeah. low. McFadden is probably going to be okay, low. That's the, other, that's the other thing about this that I would like to talk about. First, actually, where do you know where you're slotting Zeke yet? Do you have a good idea? I think about 9, 10, 9 right at the top of my head. I think I put him. I think I think I put him at nine originally. That was yeah, my he might. Range. I mean, with this That's, many games losing half, I think he. I mean, well, for me, he actually does fall the second round. So I think he probably falls more like eleven, twelve. Okay, but basically, to me, that's the cut. It's either he goes right ahead of Gurley Fournette or he goes right behind Gurley Fournette. Yeah, much, for right? me, it, I would go behind. Him. Okay. The other. Okay, the other interesting thing on this is now Darren McFadden's value jumps, and people are going to reach to get Darren McFadden if they get Zeke or something. I'm kind of under. I'm kind of thinking at this point. Would you rather reach and get Darren McFadden earlier? Or why not just get one of those back-end running backs that is going to be a full-year starter? I agree. You know um, what I mean? For McFadden, the, the question is how much is he actually going to go for? If he yeah. goes if he goes for mid-teens, In the, yeah. then no. Why would I pay for a guy mid-teens when I can get Abdullah for that? I can get, you know, um, name hey, one of the I, other guys, Paul people, Perkins I even. people talking like sixth round in a snake. I don't, I, I don't like it because I feel oh, like McFadden. Yeah, I, I've been Ooh. hearing that. It, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Like in ranks right now, it hasn't all balanced out yet. Yeah. It, but okay, if you're sitting there, let's say he's down there with I don't know Paul Perkins. People are going to draft right. him ahead of Paul Perkins, but Paul Perkins could be a full year guy. Yeah, you're I'm, losing McFadden. I'm not a fan of Paul Perkins, no, but, but that's where I think it's kind of crazy. And same thing with you know, I was I always want to use Doug Martin as an example, but it's a bad one because he's suspended as well. But there's um there's quite a few guys you can get down there that you know still look pretty good that are going to be the the starting running back. Yep. So I mean even I mean Terrence West I was going to say Terrence West Robert Kelly at 35 Robert Kelly exactly is actually well he's starting to become a huge value. Pick. P Ryan's not been impressive. Yeah, and I mean it's both it's both of them, right? It's yeah. it's pretty much the the P Ryan Kelly and then the the other side would be Hunt and Ware. Yep. So, you know, people you don't really know what's gonna happen yet. So those guys are like Ware and Kelly are gonna get first cracks. Yep. So especially in the first half of the year, those guys would be great to supplement mm-hmm. this. And also if you're gonna overpay for McFadden, you're not actually getting a deal on Elliott anymore. No. Because they're no. one back. I don't I don't like the McFadden. I don't like getting McFadden because you're gonna have to get him too high. And that's what everyone I said, oh, let's just get Zeke, I'll get McFadden. Don't, I don't think you do it. I don't think it's a good move. In, unless you can get him for a reasonable. Like, if you get him for nothing in an auction, or you get him even later, beyond like the 8th or something. Yeah, exactly. So I just, for me, I feel like there's it's too much wasted value right there that you can get a guy who should be a full-year starter and could have. I'd rather get Doug Martin, who's only going to miss three games. Yeah, then you're really screwed, I guess. But I'd even rather have that. And I'd rather do that and have Jacquez Rogers at the end. Right, you get, get those nothing. couple weeks. You know, I just think there's better options than McFadden. And I don't even for sure No, He's been an injury-prone guy. You know, how, how are we sure he's going to play, not get injured, and it's going to actually be Alfred Morris? Maybe Alfred Morris is the real pickup, like the very last round as a Pretty flyer. Much everyone that goes in there looks good running behind that yeah, line. I mean, Morris looked really good in the – I mean, it's preseason. Yeah. But still, he looked good. McFadden looked all right, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> from all the OTAs yeah. and stuff. But I think at this point, I think that's kind of where we're, we're falling, though, right now. He's still good enough. Zeke is, and it's it's risky. It's risky. You have to go into a draft knowing that this. It's not going to be something I think you just do. You have to go into a draft knowing. Okay, I think I'm going to exactly. do this. Plan around it, and think of the other guys you're going to target. It's a, it's a if you pick him, it's a strategy, yep. and you yep. have to plan your team kind of around him. That's yep. what it comes down just, to. No, you might not be great for the first half of the season, but as long as you can build a good enough team, you should be yeah. great in the second half. Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. But we're going to talk about Sammy Watkins, too. Before that, though, <laughs> looking at running backs here, Eddie Lacy has fallen to tw- ADP 28th of running backs, 28th running back off the board. I just a bit bothered. 28th running back off the board. Really? He's going behind Tevin Coleman, Frank Gore. 
Hold it. So is Rawls? Did Rawls shoot up then? Rawls, or is everyone just falling? I mean, Rawls on their consensus here. I'm not finding Rawls. <laughs> he's here. I'm just not. I don't have it up in front of me. Um, he's tw- he's forty. He's forty fourth right now. ADP wise, <laughs> he's going as the forty fourth running back. And I mean, they really think they're going to cannibalize yeah, each other. Yeah, and Lacey's down to twenty eight. It's he's. But I feel like that's even better value now. Well, there's yeah, like yeah. the risk you're taking on Lacey now. If he's actually falling, he's the 28th running back off the board. Well, the risk is so low. Or now. even Rawls. I mean, yeah. at some point, all of these guys are worth taking, yeah. and both of those seem like a huge value pick. Yeah, I think that's it's. I see some interesting. Like Ty Montgomery is now up to eight, uh, 14th, 18th running back off the board, and it's, this is all standard, all standard leagues here. Yeah. So our once I thought Ty Montgomery was looking as a good value. To me, that's not as good a value anymore. It's really funny. Getting closer and closer to the season, yep. you almost have to play the ebb and flow of where ADPs mm-hmm. turn yep. into. Because you really, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for value. That's kind of what I'm doing so I can get the most value or most talent on my team for the least amount of money or picks, if you yep. will. But with this, like, obviously, Montgomery looked good. Um, now he's going up. So now other people are falling below. Same thing with, you know, Lacey, who you just talked about. Yep. Zeke. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else that you've heard that is actually climbing up the ladder. Um, I mean, I feel like as the drafts go on and more people are now drafting and people may be more casual fans, Marshawn Lynch has gone up to the 12th board, running back off the mm-hmm. board instead of like 14th or 15th. He's now at the 12th. He's jumped ahead of like Crowell and Lamar Miller now. Crowell's the 14th running back off the board, which I feel like he was 11-12 there for yeah, a while. It was, I'm surprised he hasn't gone kept going you up. Know, McCaffrey's the 15th running back off he, the board. He is moving up. You know, let's see those kind Actually, of things. Actually, what about Delvin Cook? Cook I is keep, the 20th running back off the 20, board. See, right I keep now. he's he's one that's rising real quick, and I'm not I'm not so sure I'm not on board with that one either. Yeah. So it, it's very very funny like hearing about these players, and obviously a lot of the rookies it, it's kind of happening, and I wonder if people are going to freak out about Fournette, right? He hurt his foot. People are always yeah, worried about his ankles. It didn't say his ankle, first it's, of all. It, it, it's hard to know right now with Fournette. Be, and the problem is if you're drafting now like we are, you don't have much to go off. This could be a lingering injury. Yes, it's a worry, right? We don't have much to we, we don't have much to go off. There's no, no one does. So if you have a draft later, that's the better. You can wait. But it's almost like these kind of situations where I don't know. And if the league doesn't know, you might be able. To, you might get a steal. You might get a good value if you're willing to take a risk. Yeah, that's the thing you can get with a would. And for that one, just would you take the no, risk on Fournette? Me, I'm not. See, I would. See, I, that's I'm, not, I'm not that worried yeah, about but, the foot. But think about that. This, that if just, it was his ankle, like but, straight out, then yeah, probably. That not. just shows us in fantasy football. Think about this. Last year, you were the one. You were just gun ho on Zeke. Yeah. Rookie, I'm I'm more conservative. Don't go with the rookie. It, it didn't work for me last year. It, I, yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't always work. It, so it I could worked, be wrong. On it this worked one. for you last year. It didn't work for me. It's just that if people are listening, that's kind of how we seem to lean. I would say. Yeah. I can't on, on rookies. I'm never big on rookies. I guess early, and I never like to pay big for a rookie. Just something about it. It just worries me. Yeah, Fortnite I get could that. Be, but I don't think Fournette's. I don't think he's gonna go for a no, ridiculous. In, okay, in a snake draft, he's fine. I see him in auctions is where I get worried, and I see the auction price. Like you have had, to pay like it, fifty it four or something. Way too much. It just that bothers me. Yeah, All right. I, I don't know. He looked good though. I do have to say the limited snaps I saw him. Um, he looked like everything I thought he would be. Yep. Big running back that can pick the hole and hammer people at the end. I mean, so. Yep. I mean, you always got to worry about health, but how, how much worry can I actually put into it? How far up is Kenny Galladay going to jump after two touchdowns? <laughs> First of all, jeez. Goodbye, my deep sleeper right. pick. <laughs> you catch two two touchdowns. He's looking in good. The I like, you know, he's hopefully he's value. Hopefully, he stays down there. Yeah. I mean, and at this point, you think that he's going to get drafted now. Yeah, Before it, that, I don't think he would have been. Still, he would have been a good waiver pick. It's still preseason. It's not playing against the ones, but he looked good for a third round pick. He's looking like you thought he would be early yeah. on. We've talked about him. We've talked about Galladay a lot. Well, I guess being Lions fans. So. Yeah, and well, that's the interesting part too, just because. Lions, knowing that Tate and Marvin Jones weren't necessarily huge red zone contributors, and they always like to use tight ends. Don't know what's going to happen to Ebron, the you know the third wide receiver who is a rookie, who is the tallest wide receiver they have in the red zone. You know, I thought maybe he could have a huge upside there, and then catching two touchdowns already only you know furthers that that point. So, he, not that he's going to have a huge bulk. He's not going to have a ton of receptions like PPR. You know, probably hurts him, but. I think he could end up with a decent amount of touchdowns, so he's worthwhile to have on your roster. Yep. But obviously, don't go crazy. <laughs> but I, I still like him as a, a sleeper pick. All right, Sammy Watkins. Oh, finally, here we go. This came not long after the Zeke news, and I was just like, "Oh my God, what is going on here today?" Sammy Watkins. 
I think I just sent you a text that said, what? I don't even know what I said. It just... <laughs> All I know is it just made me laugh because as much hate as I sent towards Sammy Watkins, it's like I just feel bad for him at some point where I'm like, can your stock oh, take man. another hit? And yes, it can. If you go to the Rams, at least I think his stock went down. Do you it's, agree? I do. I do. Because I just don't think I, – I like Tyrod Taylor somewhat. I really don't know what Jared Goff is. He look, I mean, I don't think he's going to be near as bad as he was last year, but he was not good last year. The Rams are trying to do everything they can to see if Jared Goff can play. Yeah. If he could play, Todd Gurley with Sammy Watkins should be good. Should be. Should be. That's also if Sammy Watkins that, stays healthy on with, top of that in, big with, question mark. With Cooper Cup now as a rookie. Yep. And Robert Woods there. They should. Robert, I like how the Bills just gave <laughs> yeah, it's their, weird, their right? whole wide receiving Robert problem, too. Robert fine as, like, whatever he's going to be, a two or a three. Like, they should have some potential building blocks there, but it's just, I don't know. If, maybe, okay. maybe there's something from Jerry Goff. I'm not going to be one of the people that is just so down on him, like, everyone else, oh, he's terrible, he's terrible. He did. It wasn't promising, but we don't know for sure. No, you know what I mean. Like, I mean, and Sammy Watkins can probably make most quarterbacks yeah. look good. Yep. I, I just don't think. I just don't think his numbers will be anywhere close no, in order to support in to, or to support Sammy Watkins. No. It, and really, let's be honest. Do you really have that much of a threat in Robert Woods to take yeah. you know the double off of Sammy yep. when he's healthy? I don't think so. The only, I guess, it's tough because I'm a big Sammy Watkins guy, and I think the talent's there. It's just. This is it, this is, makes it into a situation where we don't know. He's no familiarity with the offense, with the team. He's thrown in there in the middle of training camp preseason. That's tough to begin with. I guess maybe now his value is not going to be bad. He's done the 21st ranked wide receiver. If you look at fantasy pros, ADP is still 18, but as wide receiver, but that that's going to adjust down. I well, think. that's already. I mean, what was he before though? I mean, I don't remember right now. I think he might have been a little higher than that. I think he was. But I mean, he already dropped a few spots. So. Yeah, it's already adjusting down. It's just it could be a bad situation. I mean, where do you feel comfortable taking him? I'm trying to look here. I had him ranked as 14th mm-hmm. originally. I I do think I, I probably I, I don't have my ranks running, but I, I think I, he's still in my top 20. I know that he's still in my top 20 just because I still think that I think there's going to be volume there, and I, I know what think of what Kenny Britt was able to be a solid fantasy option last year in that offense. Solid. But he was also that was mostly Case Keenum too. Yeah, like you have to think about that. It's true. And, and Goff could take a huge step forward. I it mean, could, it, it could. wouldn't take that much. So, and he still has an arm. I mean, I mean, he is a talented guy. Yep. But he's still insanely young for the rookie position. But it's just another thing. People were already worried about Watkins because of the injuries, and now they're just going to be worried about him. That's going to make it. People are going to. He's going to drop because of. All those factors. Yeah. The people that were already didn't even want anything to do with Sammy Watkins. Now there's just a, more, a couple more people in probably every league that don't want anything to do with Sammy Watkins. He could he could be a steal. I got him for 20 bucks in an auction. I don't think that's bad to begin with. Just for some potential there. And maybe Goff is something. Gurley is great and just opens it up for him. I mean, there's always a possibility. It, the, it, I, I can't overstate his talent. It's yeah. never been the issue. Yeah. But I was always worried about the injury. Yeah. Right, and now on top of that, I have to worry about. It. And it came from an offense that didn't throw in, an, you know, an incredible amount. Yep. So now you go to an offense that you don't know if they can throw it all, really. Yep. And then Jordan Matthews went over to the Bills to take over for that spot. We mentioned uh, which injury. Is, I, I think fifteen minutes in. I liked. I like what the Bills did, though. Yep, I really do. Um, it, at this point, we don't have any clue about this injury. It seems like it's a week to week thing. <laughs> fifteen minutes in, that's you know, hilarious. We though. we don't have a clue, so it's hard to say. But if he's, let's say he's. I don't even care if he's injured for a while or whatever. I think that shows more. They they must – the Bills must be impressed with Zay Jones somewhat. They, I don't think they make that move if they don't think Zay Jones is a player. You know what yeah. I mean? They have, to think he, they have to think there's some potential there. And they knew that before heading into this weekend. If you saw the preseason game, Sammy Watkins got like the first four targets in the game. And he didn't even realize. I think after the game he said, like, oh, wait, they were just auditioning me. Yeah. So they knew that Zay Jones is probably – Something I feel like that has to be what the option. Is. I don't think you would leave. I mean, if he if he if they don't have a very good feeling about him, you're yeah. literally leaving your team with no number one wide receiver. Yep. And you can make the argument that they went after Matthews in order to fill that vacancy, if you will, just to hedge their bets. But I really like what they did between Matthews and having the young Zay Jones there. Yep. I think you got rid of kind of a more of an injury prone guy that. Who knows? I mean, he, maybe he knew they knew that they were going to lose him eventually anyway, so they want to get something for I him. I think that's part of it. They, uh, did, they yeah, didn't they, pick up his fifth-year option. Yeah. They, this was already probably in the works. They were going to put him out there, show people, hey, he's healthy. 
he can play. They target him right away and get let's get something right. for him. I think that was what they decided. I did too. It it's no, it's a new regime. It's not the same people that drafted him. So mm-hmm. it's that's what they wanted to do. I mean, it, from here, these people are still. They don't even know if Jer- Jordan Matthews will be back by week one. It's kind of that kind of thing. So yeah, I've heard week to week. Yeah, it's. I don't know what that means. Really, Zay Jones is going to be the number one option. Which, dude, everything coming up roses for me once again. <laughs> Zay Jones has been on my teams because I, you know, he's a good value pick, and now he's even better. So, yeah. I mean, does this skyrocket Zay Jones, or do you think it just it will jump him a little bit? I don't. But know not that much. much still, right? I, I, I really don't think, don't think yeah, people are going to jump on still, They don't 100% know. It's the yeah. Bills. They haven't seen him really either. What I, mean, I actually like this move for, the player that I think is going to benefit the most, one of the players other than Zay Jones, Zach Ertz. I completely agree. Right? Like, I think there's going to be just more targets for Ertz now. I mean, and there's another player, N- Nelson Aguilar, is going to jump into that slot in the Eagles now, take over for Matthews. Tory Wilson outside. Tory Wilson. Tory Wilson thinking old WWE women's wrestlers. That's weird. <laughs> Um, Tory Smith, yeah, he's going to be on the on the outside with Alshon, who's I, I don't know if it really increases Alshon's value as much. It Not just it, it solidifies his value. To yeah, me. you know what I mean. I agree with you there, and I agree with Ertz. I think Ertz probably benefits the most, like you said. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen anything from Aguilar. I haven't either. But so he's I'm going not, into his third year. Yeah, there could. I'm not going to be done with it yet. He, he's one guy that I just well, I really haven't seen anything no, I, out of. But I think they were also impressed with him enough. Not even impressed, but thought, okay, he can handle it enough where we can just get rid of Matthews. Aguilar can jump in. That doesn't mean anything. It's still a fourth maybe option yeah. on a okay offense. You know what I mean? It's so it might not be much, but he just might be able to play. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But I think Ertz could get some more targets. I do too, man. I mean, you're already hyping him up before this, and I yep. this trade just I had to try really to, opens it up for him. I had I to try to think of something like, that would just help a me. crap ton of receptions. <laughs> I had to try to think of something that would help <laughs> me for this thing. But that's pretty much those situations. I don't have much more on those. But I figured to talk about a couple more. There's a bunch of injuries out there. Oh. JJ is still in concussion protocol. Still hasn't been out. It's been two weeks. There's still a month all season. Don't worry too much, right? Don't just tell yourself. Okay, I'm talking to myself right, right. now. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. He's my keeper for the league we're drafting this weekend. I it's still it's. I talk about when this happened. These concussions sometimes they linger. I hope they're just being cautious. But I mean, he's not out of the protocol, so it's not even like they're being cautious. He just he couldn't even be out there anyway. If this was during the season, he wouldn't be able to play yet. Mm-hmm. He's still been able to. He's been able to take part in some drills, some things that are non-contact, but still not out of it. But just it should be fine. You see, Ryan Matthews actually arrived in Philly today. Finally. Good, good for him. Man. So we'll see. Now they'll probably release him. <laughs> they've been basically. It sounds like they've been waiting for medical clearance, like he to have medically cleared before they could finally release him. So maybe he's gonna he's gonna latch onto a team here at the end. Maybe he's he's so injury prone. He's good when he plays, but that's rare. Yeah. Looks like uh, Mike Williams. It says the Chargers are eyeing an October debut for him. If I can remember correctly, who was there another player, a rookie, a couple years ago that started in about October? Like Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham? Yeah, so. Um, okay, maybe not, but maybe it won't be that. But, yeah. hey, it's happened. Boy, seriously, what's up with these rookie receivers? Every rookie receiver is injured. This has been for a few years now. I know, really? I mean. All top three of these guys have been injured. Williams, this year. Ross, Davis I mean, for a little bit. last couple years, Perriman, Kevin White, Josh Doxson. Yeah, I mean, like, those Odell guys were Beckham hurt for, year before. Like, those guys were hurt for the entire season, too. Like, I mean, Perriman, Doxson. And and white, I mean, they yeah. all missed an entire rookie. Season. There's so many of these rookie, these top rookie guys just being injured all the time. It's just, I, I mean, I don't know what that means. It's just kind of, it, it's it's annoying. I guess <laughs> right. anything, it, it's something that just <laughs> bothers me. Oh, I love, I always love the preseason, you know, hype news and stuff. Like Julio Jones is gonna has been getting, they've been getting showing a real emphasis on getting Julio Jones more red zone touches. Yeah. I, Does this mean anything to you, Jeff? No, it just seems like a very I, I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I, I understand that he catches a very like low amount, but I also think that's because he's insanely good and they're always doubling him. Yep. Um, throughout his entire career, you've never thought that to try to force the ball to him in the red zone. It just it just makes me think that you know. I think that's just talk. I think they're just like, hey, Julio, we want to get you a few more TDs. I don't think that necessarily means anything. I don't think it's going to come to fruition. Both Powell and Forte still out at the Jets camp. <laughs> I mean, is McGuire the the third yeah. rookie running back? Randomly even, brought him up a couple weeks ago just as a joke. I mean, is he way, actually but, on your radar now? I still no, but maybe in a deep dynasty. Yeah, well, not we, a we literally just had our dynasty draft yeah. a few days ago, yeah. and 
I mean, he was there. I don't, he never, no one took him. So obviously, yeah, not anybody else knew about him. Yeah, either, we didn't take him seriously. There's a couple I guess, other guys know? like uh, there's a couple guys that could have gone, but I don't know. It's something to watch at the very least. It could be Elijah McGuire and Robbie Anderson leading the show there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry for all Jets fans, man. You got, who knows? Maybe it's going to be you know uh, the lovable team that that makes a, a big run with a very limited yep. <laughs> roster. Um, uh, <laughs> what, do, what do you think about all these all these rookie QBs? I know everyone's losing their minds a little bit about them, and I'll be honest, looked way better than I thought they were going to. And I realize it's preseason and everything like that, but all four of them. Well, the funny thing is, I thought Glennon was probably the safest of these guys with a rookie behind him. I don't think so anymore. Yeah, Glennon all looked sudden, the worst, and Trubisky looked pretty solid. Yeah, it did. surprised me. I thought that was like a sure Glennon thing all year, as as shown by me drafting him in the Scott Fishbowl. Yeah, as, which is basically there's no no free agents in that league. I'm still I'm not drafting any of these guys. And they actually went undrafted. Our dynasty draft they went undrafted. Our dynasty could be a little different than some. I know a lot of people. There's probably not enough keepers to get all the rookies on the teams, all the quarterbacks, and so they kind of go. But they, it just shows when they're not drafted. Yeah, ours is different. Our league's different in that way. Some leagues have their own quirks, and ours is people just don't take yeah. quarterbacks. Well, not to mention, I mean, for the majority of them, you know, you're going to have to wait at yep. least a year. Mahomes, you know, Mahomes, you're going to yep. have to wait a year. Kaiser, look, you know, he, he could easily slide into that, but he's still on the Browns. Yep. And then you have Trubisky, who – might prove me entirely wrong. I thought that was such a foolhardy pick by the Bears for what they gave up. Yep. But who knows if he turns he out to be, be a superstar. I mean, man, he could have given up whatever. And then obviously uh, uh, Watson, Watson, who looked very good, and he could you know take it from Savage. But I still it's, expect Savage it's, it's to start Savage, the season. Savage did more of a game manager type thing. Yeah. So I don't and know. that's kind of what they need because their defense so. is really that good. Uh, Mark Easley suffered a high ankle sprain. Usually they say it was about four to six weeks, so he might might not be ready for week one. At this point, he's still like he's a sl- deep, deep sleeper for us, so he's still on the radar, but he's not necessarily a sleeper I say you need to draft. He's a guy you just watch for. So mm-hmm. at this point, I'm, prob- I'm not drafting him in any 10, 12-team leagues most likely. He's going to sit there, wait and see if he comes back. I still like him, but eh, you don't like seeing those high ankle sprains. With yeah, you just don't want especially. anyone to get injured because you don't want that to, to linger. Jordan Reed's still out. Injuries <laughs> just lingered to toe now. And he's just he I'm avoiding him. I'm avoiding him in all drafts. Just there's always something with him. It, it just I can't do Paul Richardson is out with an injury for the Seahawks, another guy who was starting to become on my radar a little bit as a deeper player in the deeper leagues. Don't really expect much there. Shoot, did you even know Andre Williams is still in the league? Remember good old Andre Williams? Yeah, from the Giants? Yeah, he's still in there. Who, where's he at now? He's with the Chargers. He had eight carries, 18 yards. That sounds like Andre yeah, Williams. Yeah, that's, that's about right. And that's against backups. So that's <laughs> that's okay. That's the extent of the news we're getting into now. So I think that's pretty much it for the free-for-all episode, unless you've got anything more. Do you want to uh, I do want to know Dez? what you think about <laughs> yeah going on the Dallas thing. Just because he got so much notoriety after the first two preseason games, what do you think about Rico Gathers? The, the giant tight end that is a, a Baylor basketball player could he be the next? Yes, there's like, there's I mean, there's a couple more of these guys out there that like they're doing. There's it always a lot something. More than now, the, every time I hear from these basketball players again, it's like, I mean, there's a couple of them. I, would, I actually I should make a list of them. I've had a few of them on my radar, and they're just not yet. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. I might miss out sometimes, but you know what? I'm I'm going. No. And, I mean, look, he's not gonna you know unseat Witten, but he was drafted in our dynasty ahead of some guys. Yeah, that I feel like, like C.J. Fedorowicz wasn't drafted. I think Fedorowicz went at the was end. he? Yeah. But, but yeah, Gathers went ahead of him. Yeah, which, and you know what? It's it's Dallas, yeah. and but and it's it's not just Dallas, but it is the it's the former basketball player thing that people like to get hyped up with. There's been how many of them that become a yeah, great handful and all of them have been big TD guys. So. Yeah, so. Yeah, so he'll get some. He'll get drafted in some league, but it's probably not. We go. <laughs> all right, that's all I got for today. Yep, yep. Unless you got anything more? No. Nope. Make sure you guys check us out on Twitter again. FF Profit Instagram. You can go tell Jeff how terrible his ranks are, as people like to do. How would I have one coming up that I think is going to go against me? So we'll wait <laughs> see. And it is, I kind of make the post for that, so I might <laughs> swing in your favor. Yeah, which I can kind of tell. Okay, I think this one's going to go this way. Make myself look better. And also thanks to Fan Up Network sponsored today's show. Make sure you check out their app. Download that and be able to track all your teams. I'll be doing that with all our ESPN teams, plus the Scott Fishbowl I can throw on there, so that would be nice. Yeah. And plus I have an MFL 10, best ball league I joined, so throw that on there too. 
don't know how that's looking. I got to see how that team looks. Now. <laughs> Those days, best balls. There's no waivers, so it's interesting. Brutal. All right, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>